fountain that isn't it it's amazing isn't it mm. it used to be even more so i think i think there were glass panels inside the dome that reflected the water as it cascaded and an inscription about the children of israel which is now no longer legible but there's so much faded grandeur here there's so much represented here Bertolt lebeckin the 30s art deco medieval england the jurassic coast it's a handsome place uh, and somewhere that would be at least as impressive as a lot of Yorkshire market towns if it just had more cash. I mean, what was it you were saying about the Seven Sisters, the tunnels earlier? Yeah, well, we've got, we've got the Black Country Museum here, obviously, um, and, the, and the canals, uh, Sesley Beacon with the fossils and all that, and Seven Sisters is that kind of network of, of caverns um, yeah. where they, they took a lot of the early limestone for the industrial process. They bid for a lot of money uh, to turn it into a major underground tourist attraction, um, didn't get it and instead of uh, it being turned into a, a very significant piece of heritage it's just been filled up with sand to stop it collapsing. Filled with sand. Mm. Wouldn't happen anywhere else would it? No. I saw the eclipse in Dudley. A lot of people went to south of France, all over the place, Cornwall, but I saw it in Dudley Marketplace. You know, it got a bit dark, people shuffled past, they were bothered really. And I've seen quite a few remarkable seismic things here. Not least, a naked man that walked into the uh, Full Moon pub just up there one Sunday afternoon. I was just sitting there having a drink, facing out towards the window, and he came in, man in his 50s, not a stitch on, went up to the bar, asked for a drink. The barman politely told him that he couldn't help him with his request. A couple of minutes passed, police car rolled quietly up, put him in the back, and off he went. So, who knows, that morning he just must have thought, this is it. Today's the day I'm going to do it. But what I often think is, where, where did, did he keep, keep his money? Change? <laughs> yep, that's it. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, the same thought. Indeed, indeed. I think it was written in ancient scripture, wasn't it, that uh, when an eclipse appears over Dudley Marketplace, darkness will fall. Yeah, and, and uh, naked men shall rain from the mm. sky. Mm. I think it's raining men. In Dudley Marketplace, rain and men. Yeah, yeah, it's good. I think it's got something there. Yep. I think we've got a hit musical on our hands. You think so? <laughs> I think yeah. there's a, lo a long way to go there. Okay. Before we knock it into some kind of shame. <laughs> and wave at the camera. He's always wanted to be filmed with the Queen. <laughs> yeah, we've been trying to get the Queen in these films for... Uh, and will it? Yeah. yeah. Did you enjoy yesterday? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so where, where's his, his, this where you've come on honeymoon, Megan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good choice. See ya. <laughs> Castle on the back, I'm pleased to say. Just like the one in Bewdley still has. Reminding me of my trips there on a Sunday afternoon as a kid. Birdcage Walk is closed, unfortunately. So I'll have to tell you the Moloch story here. 
I suppose because of its proximity to Dudley Castle, instead of a bird in the bird cage when I was a kid, they used to have a moloch in the cage. If you're wondering what a moloch is, and I suppose quite a lot of you are, it's a little spiny lizard that bleeds from its eye when attacked. About 1976, I suppose, last time I remember seeing it, around the same time as the Sex Pistols' first LP. You remember? Never mind the moloch? No? Footwear, Dudley's own Delaware Pavilion. All of the tiles individually cast in Stourbridge, a fact I didn't know when, as a teenager, I used to go there to get my size 11 Yorimco black plimsolls. I'd seen the late Mick Khan from Japan gliding across the stage in a pair of those and red socks and became so ardently enamoured of them, I wore them for years. But I never used to notice the building when I came, only the shoes therein. Makes you wonder what you'd notice if you lived long enough. What would I notice if I lived as long as a fossilised Silurian seabed? Not that a fossilised Silurian seabed is alive. Perhaps I should say if my image lasted that long. But perhaps it will, and perhaps this film will be the last of it. Park at rear, it says, but there's something stopping me from going round there. For therein lay, or lies, I don't even know, the original JBs. I used to spend four nights a week as a young man there. Tuesday, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. I found a photograph of it the other day on a Facebook page. It was a shot looking down at the bar and my heart gave a jolt right through like I'd seen someone who I knew to be dead, suddenly alive again. I used to get on the bus in Stourbridge, not four miles from here, and climb up through Quarry Bank and Briley Hill as the territory became progressively more lawless, past factories and warehouses and yards and hundreds and hundreds of strange little pubs with their dense afternoon fog of smoke and jukebox and topless barmaid. I may as well be describing a lost civilization, Deadwood Gulch, for all the similarity it bears to today. Who'd have thought that Dudley JB's would be my bride's head? Where's Quarry Bank? Is it near Quarry Bunk? Oh yeah, I've become embourgeoised by my time in Stafford. Speaking of uh, Wyatt Earth, oh, uh. wasn't he round here? Oh, from round here. Yeah, I think so. Without checking, I'm not sure. There's something about Wild Bill Hickok in Lye, this little plaque outside Lye Library. It seems entirely appropriate, that, to me, that they should be black country boys. Substituting that one vowel makes a universe of difference. Edward Bainbridge Cocknell's fabulous frieze adjacent to Dudley bus garage. Reminds me of my brother's teenage infatuation with the Soviet Union and my teenage infatuation with the dignity of Labour parts one to four by the Human League. Turn the corner and you could so easily miss it. The fragility of the happenstance is reminiscent of that tableau of pain painted for us by the late George Michael. This is a bit like a coming to your way greatest hits monologue. You think so? Yeah. Why? What do you expect me to say next then? I don't know, something about feeling like Charlton Heston at the end of Planet of the Apes. Yeah, what else do I normally say? Um, I don't know, my mind's gone a bit blank. Yeah, mine has too. I'm Dan Cummings and my mind's gone blank. 
The beautiful overlocking rooftops of the entrance to Dudley Zoo. Sometimes when I look at them, I think about Bertolt Lebeckin, the Tecton Group, Marcel Brouet, Hungarian postmodernism, that kind of thing. But as often as not, I think of that little story about the lad and his mum who came in the 70s. And when he got home, he had an unusually long bath. And then when his mother gained access to the bathroom, found that he'd nicked one of the baby penguins. I do so hope that that story's true. I remember one bonfire night when I was a little boy. My dad explained to me that business of the light taking so long to travel from the stars that what you're seeing might have ceased to exist hundreds of years ago. And for a moment, you think that the past exists somewhere, don't you, when you're a kid? And maybe the future too. But obviously as you get closer, time stretches or speeds up or contracts or something, and the past spins off back to where it belongs, just like the model of the model of the model of the model village, lost eternally to sight. Similarly, just down there, I'm doing the opening monologue for our film about Tipton five years ago. When I was a little boy, I used to dream that there were beacons in England from which you could see the whole of the world. The curvature of the earth didn't matter. And I like to think that this is one of those beacons in Cummings' world. But while I'm filming this here, if you listen very hard, you can hear me filming in all of the other places across the world. Like the distant view of the church spire in a Norfolk field. <laughs> Priory, the ruins thereof, thronged with bird song, that particular green, the tree's yearly trick of looking new, as Philip Larkin said, the air thick with hay fevery, sickly sweet scents. After it was dissolved by Henry VIII, it was used for various purposes, for tanning, silver polishing, thread manufacture, glass grinding, pools around it gradually filled up and the area became industrialized. You can see it, can't you? Like a time-lapse film. Yeah, you know when it, uh, when it was a tanning place? Is yeah. that before it moved into the town centre and became Tanya's tanning place? I don't know actually because I was reading the article on Wikipedia and I had to go to the toilet and I never finished it. 